Hey, hey, Creek Artist! I'm back to read you another book and give you some fun art activities to do right after the reading. Today we're going to learn about Claude Monet, the famous French Impressionist painter. And I have another Katie book to read you. Today the book is Katie and the Water Lily Pond, written and illustrated by James Mayhew, and I have permission from Orchard Books, Hatchet Books, Children's Publishing, um, to read this to you. Now, as you see the pictures, I want you to notice how they look like they were painted with blobs or dashes, because that is in the same style as the artist we're gonna learn about today. So let's get started. Katie and the Water Lily Pond. Katie and Grandma were visiting the art gallery. Look, there's a competition, said Grandma. What fun! You have to paint a picture like Claude Monet, the famous artist. Oh, can I have a go? asked Katie. I'm quite good at art. There's not much time, said Grandma. The judging is at three o'clock today. Katie and Grandma decided to visit the Claude Monet exhibition for ideas for, but you know, Grandma needed a rest. So Katie looked at the picture by herself. I bet I could paint a picture like that, she said, if I just had some paints. You can use mine, called a voice. Katie looked around, but the gallery seemed empty. Over here, mon chéri, said the voice. It seemed to be coming from a picture called In the Woods at Gaverny. Katie saw that Grandma was snoozing, so she stepped through the frame and into the painting. That's a lovely picture, Katie said to the lady who was painting. My sister Blanche was taught by Monet, said the lady reading a book. Cloud Monet, the famous painter, asked Katie. That's right, said Blanche. Would you like me to teach you? Blanche showed Katie how to mix the paints on the palette, how to use the different brushes, and how to fold up the easel. Then she gave Katie some paper to paint on. Now, you are ready, said Blanche. Off you go, and good luck on the competition. Thank you, said Katie, jumping back into the gallery with the painting things. Katie looked around for ideas. She saw a picture of some boats on a river called Bathers at La Grenoyer. I could paint the view from a boat, said Katie, scrambling in. That would be fun. There were so many boats to choose from. Katie clambered into one and decided to row down the river a little way to look for the perfect view. Soon, Katie found just the right place and began painting. It was going very well until Katie heard a gurgling noise. Oh no, she said, the boat is leaking. Katie tried to row back to the riverbank, but it was too far. Over here, shouted some bathers on a jetty. Katie managed to reach them just before the boat sank. Katie rescued her painting things, but her picture had floated away. Boats are too much bother, said Katie. I'm going to try something else. Back in the gallery, Katie saw a picture of a street filled with people waving flags and cheering. It was called the Rue Montaguer, Paris. Katie couldn't resist climbing inside. Katie found herself on the balcony of a grand hotel. People were waving flags from the windows while down below a brass band was playing. I'm going to paint the parade, said Katie. Katie ran down some steps onto the street and started painting. The brass band got closer and closer. Oom pa pa, oom pa pa. The band got louder and louder as it marched straight towards her. Suddenly, Katie's picture was caught on the end of a trombone. Then it was flipped up into the air and crash! Her picture was smashed between two symbols. And finally, before Katie could catch it, her picture disappeared into a tuba.
Good grief, said Katie, as the band marched off through the crowds. I need to find a nice, quiet picture with no one in it. So she ran back up the hotel steps and into the gallery. Katie looked around and spotted a lovely painting called Path Through the Poppies. What could go wrong there, she said, as she clambered through the frame. Katie skipped through the field of poppies and started to paint. It was so peaceful listening to the bird's song and a gentle mooing of a cow. Hmm, it's a rather large cow and it has very big horns. Hang on, Katie gasped. That's not a cow, it's a bull. Suddenly, she remembered she was wearing a red coat. Bulls hate red, she wailed. The bull started chasing Katie, snorting as it ran. Katie took a flying leap and jumped into the gallery. Phew, said Katie. She looked back to see her painting stuck on one of the bull's horns. You can keep it, she laughed. But time was ticking by and Katie saw it was nearly three o'clock. I'll have one last try, she said. The nearest Monet painting was called the Water Lily Pond. Here it goes, said Katie, climbing inside. Katie saw she was in a beautiful garden. Perfect, Katie said. No boats, no brass bands, and no bowls. Ribbit, said a frog. Hello, frog, said Katie. Keep still and I'll put you in my painting. Katie started painting, but the frog leapt away across the lily pads, chasing a dragonfly. Come back, called Katie, trying to follow him. But Katie couldn't move. Her feet were stuck in the mud. She fell down with a splat, and her picture fluttered into the pond. Oh, I give up, said Katie, picking up the pond-soaked picture. Painting like Monet is just too hard. She gathered everything up and went back into the gallery where she returned the painting things to Blanche. Mon chéri, said Blanche, holding up Katie's soggy picture. That's beautiful. Katie saw that the paints had smudged together and her picture did look good. I'm just in time for the competition, said Katie. Thanks for the paints and the art lesson. Katie dashed to where the judges were taking place. A water lily pond, exclaimed the judges when they saw her picture. It's just like Monet, you win first prize. They presented Katie with a lovely set of paints. Oh, thank you, said Katie, I'll have lots of fun with these. What a wonderful painting, said Grandma when Katie saw her picture. How did you do it? Well, I had a sort of lesson, said Katie. Would you like me to teach you? That would be nice, said Grandma, but let's go and have a piece of cake first. And so they did. So, like I said, Claude Monet was a real and famous artist. He loved to paint plants, trees, and flowers. He had a beautiful garden at Giverny in France, and the water lilies he painted and even the bridge over the pond are still there today. So today we're going to do some activities like Claude Monet. Here we go. Claude Monet was a French Impressionist painter. Now, Impressionism is a style of art that is not perfect. It doesn't look like a photograph. Instead, it looks like an impression of a scene, like the impression of trees reflected in the water or the light coming from a sunset or a sunrise. So he wasn't really concerned with trying to make things look perfect, which is great. Now, one of his most famous paintings is the water lily pond, just like we read about with Katie. Now, he had a real garden in Giverny, and it's still there today. And he would make sure it was clean and bright and well taken care of so he could go paint it all the time. So, let's, for our first activity, let's be inspired by his water lily pond. Now, there are several ways that we can do this, and one is to just use crayons. So here is an example of the water lily pond. 
Now, we can add another step to this, which I'll show you in a second. So first, you just need to create two rainbows in the center. Now, I used purple because there are a lot of cool colors blue, greens, and purples in his Water Lily Pond painting, but you can change it up if you'd like. So, I went towards the center of my paper, keeping it portrait, and I created two rainbows. But they were too thin, so I need to thicken them up, and then add some vertical lines to separate them. And you can see that I did that on the other side. Then I went ahead and I compared his picture to mine. I added some bushes, some lily pads, vines in the sky using dark and light green, some waves in the water, and some lily pads and lilies. And you can see I wasn't trying to be perfect. I just squiggled some lines or zigzag some bushes. So this is not about being perfect. Now you can stop there or you can take it to another level. So to do that, you might need some paint and some water. Now we're gonna use this water for another project too. Now, what I wanna do first is, it's gonna get a little wet, I'm going to dip my painting in the water. Now I use some copy paper. You can use lined paper. If you have some other paper, you can use something else. It doesn't matter. And I put it on another tray. So let's get this one out of the way. We'll use it again. And let me get my other tray so we can paint. Now my paper is all wet. This technique is called wet on wet painting. That means wet paint on wet paper. Now I take my watercolor paint. If you don't have watercolor paint, you could use food coloring, or you don't have to paint at all. You could just add more detail. You could even use chalk on wet paper. So I'm gonna take my cool colors, maybe some blues, and I'm going to go right on top of my crayon. Look at how the wax bleeds through. It shines through. That's because wax and the, the wax of the crayons and the water in the watercolor do not like each other. So the wax pushes away that watercolor paint and says, let me shine through. Now I'm going to take maybe some purple and add some purple. And you can keep doing this until your colors touch each other and fill the whole paper. Don't forget to paint right on top of your crayon. And then you'll have a nice impressionist background for your drawing. So that is our first activity. And since this is so wet, you'll have to be very careful to lift it up. You could leave it on the tray to dry or maybe take it outside and set some rocks on it so it doesn't blow away and let it dry in the hot sun today. Our next project is inspired by his impressionistic style. So in second grade, we did something similar to this this year using paint, but this time I've used markers. Now I used watercolor, I mean um, water um, Crayola markers, So, but you don't have to. You can use anything you have. And I just took my markers and used dashes and dots instead of coloring just with straight lines or filling it all the way in. I made a sunset, which is a half circle or a semicircle on a horizon line. I added my dashes and dots with my warm colors inside the sun. I made a reflection in the water with dashes going horizontally. Look at how my dashes in the sky go around like a rainbow, but my dashes on the water go vertical side to side. I overlapped my colors. Now you don't have to make a sunset on the water. You can make anything you want. You could even add, if you wanna add more to this, you could add the silhouette of a boat sailing away on the water, or a shark's fin in the water, whatever you like. And you can leave it here, or you could do what we did to the water lily pond and add some water. So I have my water tray back. 
This is where it gets crazy. This is like what happened to Katie in the book. She dropped her picture in the pond and what happened? It made it all blurry. So if I gently soak this in, and you can see I use lined paper for this, so it doesn't matter what kind of paper, and then you're going to carefully lift it out and let it dry on another um, dry plate or pan or out in the sun. And I have one finished. And here we are. So you can see how it gets all blurry um, and more like an impression of a sunset instead of a photograph, just like what Monet might do. Now our last activity idea for the day includes some real nature. So maybe you'd like to go outside and find some dry leaves or some weeds or a little piece of an evergreen tree or whatever you can find outside. Now, I have a crayon that has no paper on it. I call them naked crayons. And I'm going to use the side to make some rubbings. You can use whatever paper you have. Here's the back of an envelope that I could have thrown away. I put my paper over my leaf or whatever I found. I hold it still. I use the side of my crayon and I make a rubbing. Isn't that awesome? So now we have some nature, just like Monet might use but I've made an impression of the leaf by rubbing over it to find its texture. So let's try the next, the little evergreen piece. Oh, very cool. And you can switch colors, you can make a whole picture, you could draw the branches of a tree and then rub the leaves on them. There it is, it's showing up. So that's another idea for you. So we have three ideas. We have the water lily pond, adding your ideas. Um, we have the impression, using the dashes and dots with the markers, and we have the nature rubbings. So go ahead, try it, make it your own, and don't forget to email or post your ideas back on our Creek Artists page. I can't wait to see them. Bye, guys.